Hello, everybody. You guys should all be getting the notification here in a minute. Okay. All right. Say hi so I know you're here. We're here. Ew, like that wet. Where did that come from? Hello. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jody. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Melanie. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's super cute. What's this in here? Hmm. Little trinkets. Hi, Chow. Chow, I got your mail. Hello, Denise. While we're waiting for everybody to log on, I have in front of me the Organize More Mini Ink. Um, I ordered this a while ago. This is the Mini Ink Holder. They, they build everything as you order it, so this way I can put all my alt-new inks in here. And, you know, I gotta go in rainbow order here. Um, this is only like $20. It's really not that expensive. And you can get it from Organize More. But I think it holds, I think it's 60 ink, ink, mini ink pads. Hi, Sandy. Hey, Terry. I uh, did not have trout for dinner, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Hi, Candice. You didn't miss the notification. I just got on. Um, all right. So, you guys want to hear the fishing story? It's okay if you don't. I know not everybody is into fishing. Just like not everybody's into card making. Hey, what are we going to do? Oh, now I can put all my grays in here together. Oh, I'm liking this because I have my grays in this other container. Where's sunshine? Hi, Patty. Okay, 
This makes Nancy very happy now. Oh, here's another one. Very, very, very happy. Okay, because now all my inks are together. I have my Hero Arts in one and my... Um, My Alta News in another. The Hero Arts, I don't mind. I just don't like that there's no names on them. So I'm constantly like, what color is this? All right, let me move that out of the way. Do these stack? The, nah, not really. Okay, so for whatever reason... I think it's because of being off work. I've been staying up later. Like, the, the kids stay up. I stay up. And we watch TV and movies and things like that. So, because I'm staying up later, obviously I'm sleeping in. But I have, my timing is off. So, now at like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, I have insomnia and I'm awake. Which drives me crazy. But anyway, moving on. Um, so, today was opening day for our little quarry fishing private hole that I go to and they stock it full of trout of course and um last year I pulled out a couple small bass but I also pulled out who's not supposed to be on social media yeah so I um was up at four in the morning my son was still up playing video games so I go in his room and I'm like, hey, you need to, you know, go to bed. And he's like, oh, I want to go to bed. You know, typical teenager thing. So I'm like, all right, well, how about I go fishing? You watch your sister in case she gets up. And he's like, okay. Um, so anyway, I end up going and making myself breakfast and kind of thinking like back and forth. Do I want to go fishing? Do I want to fight with all these guys and be shoulder to shoulder and, you know, they've been there since 4 o'clock in the morning and we can't start fishing till 8 a.m. anyway. So my thought was, all right, I'll go and I'll just drive by. And if it looks cool enough to stay, I'll stay. And if not, eh, I'll just go somewhere else or I'll come home. Like, I really didn't have in my mind that I was going to go fishing. I wasn't 100% committed to going fishing. So it's only 10 minutes from my house. I go down there. And um, it's a big... It's a big quarry, and it goes to, like, 100 feet down. So when you drive into the quarry, um, there's a little parking space here, and there's a little place back here. And then you go down and around, like, and it's this huge quarry. It's really big. There's these big, like, mountainous rocks in the middle. So when we fish, normally Lee and I go, like, right over in this area here. Well, back behind here, there's this little, like, pond and there's a little cave underneath the quarry that connects the quarry and the pond so they don't stock this little pond it's very deep I mean like I said this is 80 to 100 feet deep in this quarry and it's been privately owned for like 20 years or something like that now um but so I drive and literally there are cars everywhere I mean along the road here all the way around they're double stacked. You're supposed to be six feet apart. There's boats all over the place, you know. And I'm like, um, yeah, I'm not going to get anywhere today. So I basically go down to the pond and there's like a little turnaround here that you can go and turn around and come back. So I get down to the pond and there's nobody at the pond at all. You know, these people are all like, Shoulder to shoulder, they've been there since 4 a.m., and none of them are at the pond. And they're not at the pond because they don't stock the pond. So all these guys are trying to get these big trout that they stock. And I'm like, you know what, I'll just throw my line in and I'll catch a couple bass. Like, I don't really care what I catch as long as I'm having fun fishing, right? So this other guy pulls up, and he walks down to the end of the pond down here. And I'm kind of sitting right here on the pond. And the bell rings at 7 o'clock. They tell us we can start fishing. And I have two new fishing reels. So I'm kind of farting around my fishing reels and my line and this and that. Learning the, the new reel and stuff. 
So I start with night crawlers. That's my always my go-to. I have some night crawlers. So I go down and I'm messing with the night crawlers. And then this guy comes around and he's like, I don't know, you know, the checker upper guy. So he's got his little golf cart and he's going around talking to everybody, going around the golf cart, right? So he gets over to me and he goes, you're over here all by yourself? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, you know, we don't stock over here. And I go, I don't care. I pulled out a, a trout out of here last year. I pulled a bass out of here last year. Like, I'm fine. So, Leah Jade, you are supposed to be taking a shower. So... I said, what's everybody using down there? And he tells me they're using um, spinner baits, you know? So I'm like, okay. So I switch off the worms and I go to, yeah, night crawlers, worms. So I switch over to um, crankbait and I'm throwing that in, no big deal. Now, if any of you guys know the story of my fishing adventures, you know, as a kid, I went fishing with my dad. As a teenager, I went fishing eh, every once in a while. But then it wasn't until after my dad died that I really felt like I owed to my dad to be more interested in fishing. Like, I, it was my guilt that I didn't go fishing with him enough in the end, right? So I really made an effort to keeping my boat up and taking, learning how to take care of the boat, learning how to, to trailer the boat, all these things on my own watching YouTube videos. And it hasn't been easy, but I'm very proud of myself for, for getting this boat in the water by myself and learning how to take care of it and, you know, upkeep and all this stuff. Anyway, so during all of this, I've really become more enjoying of my fishing time. Like, now I get it, Dad. You know, it took him to, to not be here for me to understand that. Um. So anyway... I just like going. It's quiet. It reminds me of him. This father and son and the grandfather pull up. And they kind of walk over to the other side over here of the pond. So we're plenty of feet apart. And the little boy is a redhead. My dad was a redhead. And the little boy is screaming at his dad. And the little boy seven years old, Leah's age. And he's like, Pappy. Pappy, Pappy, Pappy. Well, that's what my dad was. So I got a little teary. Because I'm like, oh, I'm fishing without my dad. And here's this little redheaded boy, and he's calling his grandfather Pappy. You know, so I was being really reminiscent at that point. And at this point, it's like two hours I've been there, and I'm like, okay, I'm probably not catching anything today. I should go home, check on the kids, make sure they're not dead. <laughs> and the little boy's dad says, what are you fishing with? I said, well, I was using crank worms, crankbait. I guess I'll go back to worms. And I'm like, okay, 15 more minutes, and then I'm leaving. So I put a worm back on my rod, and I'm and, um, on my hook and I'm sitting on my phone and I'm reading Facebook comments. Like I'm looking at you guys' comments and, you know, I'm just farting around. Well, I feel a tug on my line and I go, oh, I got one. And it wasn't like a big tug. And I'm like, oh, I got probably a regular trout or bass. So as I pull it up, it gets within three feet of me. You see this fish jump out of the water. So the guy standing next to me is like, oh, that's a big one. And I'm like, yeah. So he runs over and grabs his net. Now, my net is behind me, but I'm not taking my eyes off of this fish. Well, it jumps. I slowly start to reel it in because I don't want to overreel and lose the fish. Because at this point, I see how big it is, and I'm afraid it's going to snap my line. And as it gets closer to the edge of the, the coast... Um, where I'm standing, he he grabs the net and he pulls it in. The hook, you guys are not going to believe this. The hook, when the fish jumped, so this is the fish's um, nasty face. <laughs> because this is a big ass fish. Oops, sorry for the cursing. Anyway, the fish hook was on the outside of the gill here. I know it's hard to see my little terrible fish drawing. So I think it spit the hook when it jumped and when it went back in, my hook grabbed it on the outside of the gill. Like I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe I caught this big fish by luck. I mean, it wasn't in its lip. It was on the outside of the gill. I was just like, what? 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 And then the kid is like, this kid's eyeballs are like popping out of his head. He's like, oh my gosh, it's such a big fish. So the dad takes my picture of me holding the fish. And he's like, you're going to put it back. I go, I've never caught a fish that big in my life. 
it's going home with me. I'm done. Have a good day. So, um, that's what I feel like. I feel like my pops was there with me. So <laughs> the little boy takes a picture with the fish and I'm like carrying it like firewood. Like this thing is cradled in my arms. It's kicking and fighting and jumping and I barely get it thrown into the back of my car. I don't even care at this point. I just throw it in the back of my car in the trunk. <laughs> I'm just like in show, total euphoria, total shock. This big fish is in the back of my car, jumping around. I throw all my stuff in the back of the car. It's like nine o'clock. I go to leave. And again, you, you know, I got to drive past. So here's what I did. I held the fish up over here at the pond. And I look at all these guys that are hogging up the lake. And I go, yeah, you guys didn't even want to go to the pond. Look at what I got. And you can just see that I had this big fish. <laughs> I was very overly excited. So I drive back up to the clubhouse, which is over here. And I park my car and the guy just looks at me because you're not supposed to be there. You know, everybody's in masks and gloves and stuff. And I go, I need to be measured. He's like, okay. Like thinking, oh, here's this girl. And I open up the trunk of the car and he sees the fish and he goes, oh, we need Bob. And I guess Bob's the official. I don't know. So Bob comes over, takes my name, takes my number. He measures the fish. It's 25 inches. So measure 25 inches and six and a half pounds. It's the biggest fish on the leaderboard. There's another 25 inch fish, but my fish was a pound heavier than his fish. And Lee and I went back this afternoon. I'm still on the leaderboard. And the guy said to me, where'd you catch that? I said, at the pond. And he goes, that's last year's fish. It survived. And I was like, well, I don't care whose fish it is. It's my fish now. <laughs> and then obviously came home all excited, woke the kids up, made them look at my fish. And when Leah saw the fish, she was like, mom, it doesn't even fit in the sink. And I'm like, you want to go fishing? She's like, yeah. <laughs> So there's my fish story. I'm very proud of it. I cannot believe I caught a fish that big my whole life. I'm just in shock. So anyway, I gutted it. It had eggs in it. I put the eggs in the, fr in the fridge so I can make bait out of them for later on. And I sent pictures to everybody and anybody I could send pictures to about this fish. And everybody was like, it's Photoshop. It's Photoshop. So then I had to send a picture of the leaderboard. But anyway, on to, yes. So great fishing day. <laughs> uh, it's a rainbow trout. Rainbow trout. Yep. All right. Hi, Stacy. Stacy missed my fishing story. <laughs> All right. So I got a couple more things for the giveaway. I got the, this pack of alcohol inks, Laguna Glacier and Monsoon. I figured you guys would want to make some blue backgrounds after we did our blue background. So I got a set for myself and I got a set for the giveaway. I also got one of the alloy in sterling figuring these, this would probably be the most used color. So one of these is going to go in the giveaway and I got you a little nail brush. This is to clean your stencils. So this is going to go in the giveaway. So I'm just trying to add up my giveaway pile here. Of course, I got those for myself. So those will go in my pile. Um, oh, thanks, Caroline. Um, okay. So I got some happy mail. <clears throat> I got a nice little letter from Suzanne. So Suzanne asked me to send her some foiled samples, which I did, those ones that we laser printed and printed out. And she sent me this cute card. This is a Stampin' Up! Um, stamp. So very, very cute card. Thank you, Suzanne. And then I got a card from my friend Terry all the way out in Canada. So Terry foil, I think, I don't know if this is, Terry, is this stenciled on? I feel like it's stenciled, but it's really smooth looking. So I don't know how she did that. 
it's so smooth it almost looks like pattern paper but i think she stenciled it. it's very nicely done and then this is um foiled and raised up and then she mounted it on some foil cardstock and then um you couldn't be more awesome which is great i love that so all the way from canada <clears throat> speaking of happy mail um, I hope you guys signed up on our Foiling and Stamping Facebook group, which is, um, we're going to do a card exchange. The first 31 people <laughs> that signed up, I forgot to ask you your email addresses so I can send you your email, your addresses to mail to, but I was looking at the list and I think I have most of your email addresses. So if I reach out to you, I'm just looking for your email address because I need to email you the list of the other four people that are gonna be on your team once I have the total list accumulated. But everybody else, you had to put your email in. Ah, thank you, Carmen. Okay, and then do you guys recognize this beautiful card? I was so happy when I opened it and saw it. This is the card that Chow made, and she, this is the Creative Vision Stamps Big Blossom. I think this is the Heidi Swap Stars foil on it, which is just stunning. And then she did this, like, quilted um, embossing folder, also inked it, then took the time to put glitter, not just glitter, there are individual little diamonds in there. This is foiled and popped up. And then over here, it's an inked piece of, um, I think it's Yupo or glossy card, but she's got mica shimmer on here. She's got foiling on here. I mean, this had to have taken a lot of work, Chow. And I just think it's simply gorgeous. So thank you for that. And then Chow also sent two little goodies in here. Um, Nouveau Crystal Glaze. Is this the same as, hold on. Is that the same as Crystal Drops? You guys will have to tell me. Is Crystal Glaze the same as Crystal Drops? But bigger. Because I have crystal drops, and I will be honest with you guys. Oh, it's not the same. Okay. I was not ever impressed with the crystal drops because my crystal drops cracked. So I don't know. Okay, so then this is going to be a better formula. Great. That's awesome. Cool. All right. All right. Well, then I'm very, very happy to have that. And then this I was kind of interested in. This is um, Marabou Inks Rainbow. So let me grab a piece of Yupo quick. I'm gonna open my, my new inks here and we'll just do a sampling of these. Thank you very much, Chow. You, you guys, let me tell you, the amount of support you guys have given me, I feel like I need to go play the lottery. Like, I am so lucky to have met you guys, and I know it's virtually, but I got, like, three orders this morning for Stampin' Up!, which you guys did not have to do, and you guys contributed to that. I was like, I got people sending me stuff for the giveaway. I got people emailing me files to try to do things I, I the uh, the Melanie takes the cake with the the scan and cut like I I cannot believe I mean I can believe I'm just very very blessed and lucky to have such generous friends like I really love you guys hello Mr. Tran Sunshine and I like have these daily giggle chats every day. It's so fun. Terry and I, Stacy and I, Tracy and I. You guys are so good. Bernie, Lee, Gloria, like I love you guys. All of you. You're all just amazing, amazing people. Yeah, Denise, we're all here for you. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Catherine.
Aw, thanks, Kelly. All right. Um, so these are the new alcohol ink colors. Again, this is called Blue Something. Um, I don't know. Blue Something. <laughs> I ripped the pan off already. All right, this is Monsoon. And I'm just playing here. We're not making anything here. I'm just playing. We will get into today's lesson. I know you guys are all excited about... Um, card making scrapbooking school here <laughs> so this is like a like a blue jean colors what i would call this one monsoon it's very pretty glacier seems to be a much brighter blue oh yeah this is almost like the blue that's in the what's a uh, bria reese's blue that malibu blue that's what this is kind of like it's very pretty and then this is like a teal laguna so for those of you guys that wanted to do the, um, remember we were doing our underwater scenes on the Desi. I thought these would be really pretty blues to mix that up. And then Chow sent me this Marabou Ink Rainbow Alcohol Ink. We're going to see what it does. And my, I don't need gloves. I had my hands all over fish. You need a thumbtack to poke it open. Oh, this thing needs to be poked open. I'm like, what? It's already open. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, hold on. Thank you for telling me that. I've been trying to squeeze in and out. And it blew up all over the desk. I did get some nail supplies today. Maybe I'll get around to doing my nails. Okay, so... Is that for all the Marabou inks? They come packaged that way and you got to push pin in them? I think that's pretty genius, actually. I got glitter on my hands. Okay, so this is... Oh, it's glitter. Ooh. Ooh, me likey. Oh, you guys. It's an iridescent... Oh, I got to show this to you. It's like magic. It's an iridescent sparkle glitter. Oh, too much. <gasps> this is beautiful. Thank you, Chow. Oh, this is right up my alley. It's not like the alcohol pearls. Oh, no, it's glitter. It's not mica. It is glitter. Oh, Chow, you enabler you. I'll have to find an Amazon link for you guys. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll find an Amazon link for you guys. But it's not like the pearls because it's not mica. It's glitter. Oh, my gosh. And look, it takes on the blue or it takes on the teal, like wherever I put it. Oh, my gosh. And then I got, oh, I like that so much. I'm going to be playing a lot with that. Okay, I got two more alloy colors, gilded, which looks like gold to me. Up. And sterling, which is silver. And again, the blue inks and the sterling I put in the giveaway box. I bought two because I love you guys. So these are the alloys. And again, the alloys kind of sit on top. They're very pretty, but they look like a solid. The only way I can describe them is they look like melted, molten metal. And they dry that way. Like very solid looking is how I can explain it. Oh my God, I'm in love with this. I really got to find a way to play with that. Okay, enough with the alcohol inks. I should go buy a lottery ticket. What time can I buy a lottery ticket to? You guys, I might have to go and buy a lottery ticket. I'm just feeling so good. Maybe I'll meet the man of my dreams in the grocery store when I buy the lottery ticket. Just kidding. I'm kidding. Maybe not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, let's talk about paper 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 i'm gonna try this too let's open this up and try this because i want to see what it's like it's 
It's called Marabou Rainbow Alcohol Ink. Ooh, we're going to see if this dries with a... It looks like it domes. I'll put that aside and we'll see, check on it later. Okay, we're going to talk about paper, 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 paper. Sunshine, you got your pen and paper ready. You taking notes, honey? You guys had such a positive feedback yesterday. That's right, Bernie. Never say never. That's a Justin Bieber song. Hello, Sparkle Miss. Okay. So... Yes, uh, the other day we talked a lot about UPO paper, so I'm really not going to talk about UPO paper today. It's basically plastic. It's a synthetic paper. You can't rip it. You can cut it, but it is great for um, it is great for watercoloring or alcohol because it stays on top of the plastic, and then you can move it around. You don't want to heat set it because you can melt the plastic or do, do you heat setting from a far, far away. And hello, Elaine. Uh, yes, Sparkle Miss, we just did a little sampling of some Marabou Rainbow Alcohol Ink. Um, hi, Richard. Um, yes, Miss Chow, Chow sent it to me and I'm just like, floored. Yeah, I'll find the Amazon link for you guys. Um, but anyway, UPO paper is like a plastic paper, good for water coloring, good for alcohol inks, moves the alcohol around on top. If you don't like it, you take alcohol or blending solution and you can pretty much erase it. And then you can stamp over it. And what kind of inks, pop quiz, what are the two inks I suggested to stamp over UPO paper? Do, 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 do. Correct, Caroline has one answer, stays on. And what is the other one? Nope, nope. Yes, Emily. Emily, you win a card. Email me. Yeah, stays on our archival work best on Yupo. Because, again, these are... Um, permanent inks, so they will dry on the surface of the alcohol ink plastic paper, okay? Brutus Monroe doesn't really dry. It's not, it's not an alcohol-based ink. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of its own thing. Okay. Hello, Richard. Oh, hi, Patty. Welcome back. Okay, so we did enough with Yupo. I don't think I need to talk about Yupo. Okay, I want to talk about um, basic cardstock. Okay, and when I say basic cardstock, I mean this is the stuff you can find anywhere, any store, um, Walmart. AC Moore, Mike, well, not AC Moore anymore, Michaels, okay, basic cardstock. So, basic cardstock to me is only good for two things. Number one, um, making your card bases, because when we make our card bases, we take this card and we basically um, fold it in half and cut it and you're really not stamping or coloring on this. So this is just your base, okay? Um, this card, you're okay, in my opinion, to have inexpensive card. Now, I really only carry two colors of heavy-duty cardstock, which is 110-pound cardstock. And it's 110 pounds in the U.S. It's 300 GSM in uh, Europe. Okay, and 
Yep, I'll go over that, Stacy. So this is heavy cardstock. This is for your card bases. So when you make your card bases, you know, this is going to be just the background to our card. It's a nice heavy weight. It's going to hold up. We're going to usually stamp some kind of a panel and put that on the outside and then another panel on the inside. This paper, it's okay if you're not going to be coloring on it or stamping on it for you to go the cheaper route, okay? So I know I talk about Nina 110 pound cardstock. I talk about stamping up 110 pound cardstock. That's if you're going to be stamping or coloring on them. But if you're gonna be making regular card bases, I only buy two colors, black and white. This is Paper Studio, which is, I think, Hobby Lobby brand. <laughs> um, but it says extra heavy weight, and it says $15.99. However, Hobby Lobby always gives us that 40% off coupon. A lot of times they have uh, paper half off. So you can usually get this for right around 8 bucks or so. Okay. Um, and then the black I got from Michaels. This is the Recollections brand. Um, but these are both 110 pound great for card bases. Okay. All right, so the other cheaper cardstock like this, I do buy black and white only for, okay, so here's their cheaper white and cheaper black for matting, okay? What I mean by matting is, I'm trying to grab some card samples here to show you, okay. So here we have a stamped Upo paper image, and then there's a black mat, okay? That's okay to be cheaper paper. So if you have cheaper colored papers, it's okay to use those for matting. Not good to color on, not good to stamp on. A lot of times they don't hold glue very well or they wrinkle up, um, so they don't foil well. So that's okay to mat. So we have our cardstock base, which is heavy duty 110 pound cardstock. We have our matting paper, okay? And then I wanna talk about what your main, what I call stamping panel is, your main focal image, okay? Which is this guy right here. Now in the inside, we're also gonna talk about what we should put on the inside here. But for this main stamping image, for example, this one is Yupo paper, okay? Um, this one is photo paper, more Yupo paper. Um, this one is stamping matte cardstock. So when I say stamping panel, I'm talking about what is your focal image going to be on? Are you coloring it? Are you die cutting it? Um, you know, are you alcohol inking it? Are you watercoloring it? That's what I'm talking about there. So in terms of plain paper, and somebody did ask about, um, somebody asked about, well, foiling, okay? We're gonna talk about that too. But I'm trying to save you a couple dollars and it's okay, again, speaking more to the beginners here, the noobs, the newbie guys, um, it's okay to buy cheaper 110 pound card stock for your card bases. And we all have jumped on the bandwagon where we bought 500 sheets of rainbow paper and then got home and found out it was not so good paper, okay? This is, this is what this paper is good for, card bases and matting, okay? All right, and test sheets. Don't forget, you know, I'm always like testing out inks, testing out stamps, swatching things out. It's okay to do that on this kind of practice paper. You don't want to waste your good paper, okay? So let's talk about good paper. Okay, there most certainly is good paper. Just like yesterday, we talked about buying good inks and buying good stamps. What was the stamps we said were inferior? There are three types of stamp materials. What were the three types of stamp materials? <coughs> Correct. 
correct. Silicone. Yep. Silicone, photopolymer, and rubber stamps. It's the same thing with our paper. So the paper we just talked about, consider that the silicone paper. Will it do its job? Yes. Can we get it cheaper? Yes. Is that what we want our, our image to be on? No. Okay. So now we're going to step it up and we're going to talk about better paper, better card stocks. Okay. So we already talked about UPO. And UPO does have different weights too, by the way. So this is heavy cardstock. I honestly really only use the regular UPO. Let me see how heavy this is. All right, it's a little heavier. I guess if you were going to be doing a lot with it or heat embossing it, regular UPO is just fine. But they sell heavy UPO. Okay, I'm going to talk about... Um, and again, these are all my own opinions based on what I have tried and what I have used. And for those of you that would like to chime in and help me out, like Stacy does a great job helping me out, go right ahead. You guys have, a lot of you have been doing this way longer than I've been doing it. So chime in on that. Um, when it comes to stamping your images, I like to use basically three types of paper. I'm talking regular stamping, okay? My go-to for 99% of it is this paper here, which is, here we go, Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 Pound. You can get this big old hunkin' pack for two, uh, 250 sheets, I think. Yeah, I think I paid $40 for this, you guys. So worth it. This will last me forever, but this is what I use majority of the time when I am doing, um, right, cover. And make sure that it says Classic Crest Cover Solar White, okay? This makes a difference. There's so many different Nina papers out there. You can't just go by Nina. You have to look for Classic Crest Cover Solar White, and this is the 80 pound, okay? Um, this is going to be great if you want to do marker coloring in terms of alcohol ink marker coloring. Um, I'll link the Amazon link for you. I just got it. Um, um, this is going to be great if you want to do color pencils and gamzol, um, those kinds of things, okay? The other companies that make great paper, which are very good as well and very similar, are the Stampin' Up! Whisper White. The Stampin' Up! Whisper White is ultra smooth. However, it is a little bit more expensive because you do got to go through a Stampin' Up! rep. Um, but you get 40 sheets in this. They also make 110-pound Stampin' Up! So if you're going to be stamping on your card base, you want to make a single-layer card. That's when you go to the 110-pound Nina or the 110-pound Stampin' Up! Because you want to stamp on your card base, and sometimes we have to do that. We want to make a single-layer card. That's when you want to, to whip out your good paper. So you have Whisper White, um, Heavy Card, says Thick Card Stock, and then you have Whisper White, Regular Card Stock. You have Nina Regular and Nina Heavy, 80 and 110 pound. And something new um, that was in my stash, but this is Spectrum Noir. Stru Spectrum Noir is the same thing. They kind of advertise this more towards alcohol marker coloring. But what this paper does is because it's so smooth, it allows the um, inks to blend. It gives you time to work with it. Um, it stamps very nice. So it's just good stamping paper. Okay. Um, let me move these out of the way. Does all of that make sense so far? Does any of this slow me down if I start to confuse you and ask me questions? Okay, so they're all they're they're all kind of interchangeable. Okay. Now I'm gonna kind of talk about what I consider specialty papers. Okay. Specialty papers are nice, not required, just like we talked about inks yesterday. As you improve and start to build up your stash, you want to kind of add specialty papers, right? So there are glitter papers, there are foil papers, there are um uh, what's the other one? Shimmer papers, okay? Those are all fine and dandy, okay? There is what's called matte coated cardstock, and I made the mistake a few weeks ago, 
And this is where you kind of have to read what you're buying because I did not. So this says matte coated paper, but it says text, premium text. And this says matte coated cover cardstock. And this is a hundred pound weight. So they're both coated, but one is much heavier. This almost feels like typing paper, okay? What is matte coated paper? Matte coated paper has a specialty coat on it where it's not really smooth. This works great for foiling. So for those of you guys that are doing um, either hot foiling or toner foiling, for whatever reason, this paper really kind of absorbs the laser, um, the toner, and it does very nicely with stamping and very nicely with absorbing the ink and holding on to the ink. So I mistakenly bought this printer paper, but it works out great in using it for foil stamping because the fibers have this coating so they don't peel up, okay? So these are great for foiling that's what i'm going to be using these for okay coated cardstock and i would recommend they this comes in 80 100 pound and text weight so text weight is the lightest okay okay glossy cardstock you can get glossy in white or black Glossy's kind of um, interesting. Glossy has a smooth coating over the top of it. So it's it's almost like photo paper. Um, yes, Auntie Teresa, it has this, you can feel that it has a matte coating on it, but it's a smooth matte coating. Um, so glossy paper we can use for a couple things. I found out through one of you guys, uh, who was it? Was it? Was it Deb? It may not have been Deb. Deb or Barb. One of you guys, uh, maybe it was Pat, found out that the black glossy cardstock hot uh, foiling sticks to this. So whatever reactive is in this, um, you can almost use this similar to toner die cutting paper. It's not exactly the same, but we found out through accident um, on that. Um, glossy white cardstock is almost like photo paper, but it's not photo paper. This has a paper coating in the back. It has a single layer coating on top. And what this does is it absorbs alcohol ink very quickly. So you can use your stippling tool, um, on your alcohol inks with this. We showed yesterday this with the felt, not the sponge, but the felt. You can do some cool designs. You can die cut with it. It has a, sh a shine to it, okay? So just you can use it for some different techniques. It's just a specialty paper for that, okay? I like black glossy for die cutting when you're um, die cutting sentiments and things like that. It just stands out and it has that shiny glossy look to it, okay? It's called glossy paper. And um, this is from the paper cut. The other one was from Marco's um, for that, okay? Of course, there is watercolor paper. Okay. Now, the same thing with watercolor paper. There's a whole bunch of different companies that sell watercolor paper, all depending on how much money you want to spend, what's in your budget. Um, I find for most of what I do, Tim Holtz watercolor paper is pretty good. The Arteza watercolor paper is really good. Um, and I buy like the student grade watercolor. It just depends on what you're doing. What we're doing the majority of the time, what I'm doing is I'm stamping out an image and I'm coloring it in with markers or with paint. I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not an artist. I don't need full grown expensive watercolor paper. So these little watercolor cardstocks or artist grade watercolors work fine for me. If you are going to be more of an artist, you might want to um, invest in better watercolor paper. You can definitely do some research on that. Okay. Okay. This is one of the staple papers I would say is a huge help to card makers. Um, so a long time, just like you guys, I was watching these YouTube videos 
And everybody kept Bristol smooth, Bristol smooth. Every other word was Bristol smooth. And I was like, what is Bristol smooth? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Jan. <laughs> Bristol smooth is exactly what it says. Smooth. This is the ultimate ultra smooth surface. The advantage to using Bristol Smooth is, number one, when you are doing ink blending. When you do ink blending on a regular piece of paper, and I'm just going to use 110-pound Nina here. And you guys saw me have this issue yesterday with the Nina. Remember, I said it's good for card bases and stamping on, but so this is the 110 pound Nina, and I'm using the domed applicator. Okay, but that ink is soaked right in. Like, there's no movement there, there's no water coloring. Um, there's some blending, but it's not great. You can kind of, I mean, you can feel the ink soaking in. It's gone, okay? Bristol Smooth gives you time to work with it. Remember how we talked about dye inks and pigment inks and how dye inks soak into the paper and pigment inks kind of sit on top of the paper? Bristol kind of takes the both of both um best of both worlds okay so what bristol does is it's smooth enough to allow you to stamp on it but it gives you a moment to allow your inks to blend before it soaks them up okay so here's a little piece here i'm going to show you that same this is the bristol so already you can see the difference of how much smoother this blending is it doesn't just soak right in the paper. It gives me a moment to blend that ink, okay? There's no harsh lines. So if you're gonna be doing backgrounds, and you should really try not to put your fingers in there because your fingers will kind of absorb it. But you'll notice how smoothly these colors are going to kind of blend and transition. If I want more purple, I add more purple. If I want more pink, I add more pink. But it's giving me a moment before it starts to dry and soak that ink into the paper to have a much smoother blend. Okay? That's, that's number one. So whenever you're doing distress inks are huge with backgrounds. And again, we talked about doing um, galaxy inks. We talked about um, doing um, skyline backgrounds where I've done sunsets or sunrises. We do uh, water scenes. So a lot of times we're blending quite a few colors. The other thing that we like about this is remember yesterday when I did the little water droplet? That 110 pound Nina wants to soak it up, okay? Look at how white those water drops are on Bristol. Bristol allows that ink time to get um, to the alcohol lift. I mean the distress ink lift, okay? Yeah, so to prevent the the fingerprints on here, you can cut a spare piece of paper. The other thing is, oh, I'm out of post-it tape. They sell the post-it tape rolls. You can take a piece of post-it tape or a piece of your purple tape. I like the post-it tape because it's just less sticky. You put this on your fingers like this, and then you hold this down to do your ink blending. Okay? Uh, what I really like Bristol for, though, is when I am coloring, okay? So let me stamp out an image. I can't sneak peek you the new images yet, so we won't do that. Let's do this guy here. Um, somebody's message got taken back. 
And these are regular distress inks. Like I said, regular distress inks are great when you're doing backgrounds. Not so good for stamping. You can do the same thing with distress oxides. And the cool thing about distress oxides is they turn kind of whitish. They get this white kind of pigmented look to them. It's really neat. This blew my mind when I figured out what Bristol paper was for this simple fact right here. Okay, we talked about Nina paper, Spectrum Noir paper. They're all good when it comes to alcohol inks. Well, what about all of the other markers? And we're going to talk about mediums here in just a second. When you're watercoloring, you want to use watercolor paper. And I'm talking paint watercoloring. I'm talking... Um, you know, pots of watercolor paper or acrylic paint or something like that. I know that's not the best stamped image, but that's okay, okay? When you're coloring images with Zig markers, um, watercolor markers like the Spectrum Noir markers or these Aqua markers or real brush pens or Arteza pens, these are water-soluble sol pens, okay? Water-based pens. So what often happens, and this frustrated me so much with the zigs, is the water got soaked into the watercolor paper too fast or it just didn't blend nicely. So here, and hopefully you guys can see, this is a, a zig clean color, but you can use any kind of water-based marker. So Tombow markers, um, the Stampin' Up! water-based markers, not alcohol markers, water-based markers, okay? And you take a water brush. It would help if I actually had one that had water in it. Hold on. Remember I said these mic these markers kind of felt dry to me? Well, I was using the wrong paper. Now look how instantly that activates with water and moves. Immediately. Let's do a little bit of green. It gives the ink a few minutes. <laughs> it gives your ink a few minutes to sit on top of that paper so you can blend it you can watercolor with it you can move it and now I don't feel like I'm a bad colorer when I was coloring on the this paper First of all, like I said, the markers look dry. And these are the zigs. These are supposed to be the best ones, right? These are the most expensive ones. So this is on 110-pound Nina. And I'm going in with a, the same water marker. Look at that ink is soaked in. It's not going to move. It doesn't want to be watercolored. Uh-uh, no thank you. Have a nice day. This is the Bristol paper, Bristol Smooth. Okay. Put some red, put some yellow. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to come into my lane? Would you like to do some merging? You would, would ya? Would you like to make a new color? I can keep pulling red over. I can keep pulling yellow over until I feel like, hey, I have a nice blend here. So if you are very frustrated with your colors, and I've heard this a lot from people who have these Arteza real brush pens, listen, I like the Artezas because they're a great price point. I can't afford all the zigs. I would love to have a set of the Karen markers if somebody wants to hook me up with those, girlfriend will take them. However, they are expensive. I know they're expensive, and I know right now we're supposed to be watching our budget. The Zig markers are not bad markers. Check your paper. 
The difference between these two, honestly, is there's more control with the zig markers because you have a smaller tip. So if you are going to be coloring in smaller areas with more detail, you want the zigs, but they are more costly. You can get almost as good. I never say they are as good because they are kind of a generic knockoff version, but you can still get that color to blend and move with the Artezas. The biggest difference is the size of the tip. You have more, the Artezas are just much bigger and the zigs are smaller, finer point, okay? Who's sending me Karen markers? We can pretend it's my birthday. Yes, so same thing, Chow. Not all watercolor paper is the same. Now, I've been having a lot of success with the Arteza Expert watercolor paper, but you can do some watercoloring with the Bristol, okay? You can't put too much water on here because it will, it's not designed for straight up watercoloring. Um, it will start to eventually peel up, pill up, I should say. Um, but you can do a lot of small sections at a time with the Bristol paper, okay? Hi, Kim, honey. Thank you, Stacy. You're a woman. All right, so if you're having a frustrating point with your markers, water-based markers... Okay, there's a lot of companies out there. Tombow has water-based markers. Um, I had this company from Japan. I've had these for like 20 years. The, the Sai Japanese markers. I had them before they were cool. <laughs> um, change out your paper. Um, Parku markers sent me. Remember we did a giveaway with Parku markers? Um, Parku markers work the same way. Um, this is some Chinese Japanese set. I don't know where I got this from. I think my ex brought these back from Japan or China or something for me. I got a lot of these watercolor markers. Um, but they're all the same, really. Um, and yes, the Arteza Twee markers are also the same thing. I don't have those in front of me. The Twee markers are just kind of a smaller version of the real brush markers. So the secret is Bristol paper for these guys. Do invest in a set of Bristol paper. Now, before AC Moore went out of business, um, they had their own version of Bristol paper, which is just as good as the Strathmore. It's good paper. Very, very good paper. Okay, so water coloring paper, I would say you're going to be doing a lot of water coloring, adding a lot of water, using paints, you know, like we talked about the, the paint pots and actual paints of watercolor. Then you want to use watercolor paper, but if you want a blending to be easy and smooth, just reach for the Bristol. It just makes your life a whole bunch easier. Okay, all right, what else is there? So many things, you guys. All right. Um, let's talk about color pencils. Can you talk about color pencils? Okay. Okay, so we have Basically, two types of color pencils. I have two brands of color pencils, basically. I don't know the difference between hot press and cold press. That's something you'll have to do some research on YouTube and ask some artists like Christina Warner would know. I have no idea. I think it's the way that it's manufactured. Um, one has tighter fibers than the other, I think, is what the difference is. Okay. Um, I did a video a few years ago. Um... 
My son just sent me a picture of his beard. Yeah, he said, take a picture of his dad. <laughs> Glory, is this the, the single one that's in the band? <laughs> Barbara, girl, that is my birthday. I'm going to be 29 again. <laughs> Yeah, one is smoother because of the way it's manufactured. Okay. So, um, uh, we'll have to do a birthday thing, too. Let me figure out the card exchange, and then we'll work into the birthday thing. Okay, so these are Prismacolor pencils. And I bought Prismacolor pencils because it was the cool thing to do back in the day. And they were a little bit expensive. I did find them on sale. But then I started reading all of these reviews about them. This pencil's cracked all the way down the middle. Um, that these pencils are now, I guess, manufactured in Mexico. And because they're manufactured in Mexico, the quality is not as good. And oftentimes people find their leads are broken and they're very difficult to sharpen. Okay, so I've bought this case off of Amazon to store them. I don't use them very often. Um, but what I did find is when you want to sharpen these, the best way to sharpen them is to put them in the sharpener and move the sharpener. Do not move the pencil. Hold the pencil steady. This will help reduce the number of lead breakages you have. That's what I read online. I did my research, you guys, okay? But you are to hold the pencil steady and instead move the pencil sharpener. And this is a Prismacolor sharpener as well. Um, but Prismacolor supposedly used to be back in the day, pretty good color pencils, highly pigmented. They're very soft. They're very easy to blend. Um, but I've heard that they kind of just went downhill a little bit. And so there are really good... Their legs are broken. <laughs> um, yeah, but they, they're pretty good, but there are other more higher-end pencils out there, okay? Um, of course, I had to try out the Artezas. Um, and the Arteza brand has been my go-to brand because, uh, number one... You get way more colors. Once again, oh, they sell these cool pencil cases too at Arteza now. But you get the, you get way more colors. It's a cheaper price point. And if you're using smooth paper, either Nina Solar White or you can use Bristol, it doesn't really matter. Um, I use Nina usually. They blend very smoothly. Now, I do have linked. I will link these for you. These are called blending stumps. And I think that um, Sunshine can, it can kind of verify, back me up, that when you use Gamzel, and Gamzel is a mineral spirit, okay? They made it so that it's odorless. And what this does is, is basically it's a chemical that melts the wax. So it smooths the blend. And if you've watched any of my Blue Night Rubber Stamps video, um, you see that I color with the color pencils. I take what's a, called a blending stump, which is a rolled up piece of paper with a sharpened end and I dip a little bit into the gamzel and I spread it over my color pencils and it makes it very smooth. Color pencils have been my number one go-to for coloring because you cannot mess it up. <laughs> Markers, you can mess up. Color pencils, you can't mess up. And the gamzel dries, actually you can get a whole uh, a dauber top bottle I have on my Amazon link. Um, Gamzel dries odorless almost instantly, and it doesn't peel or warp your paper. So it's different than watercolors. You have a lot more control. So when you purchase, I do recommend color pencils, blending stumps, and then this is sandpaper. So when your blending stumps get dull, or maybe you don't have, like I try to keep the same color family, but maybe you need to switch out your color family. You just use this kind of like a sharpener. And you, you take your blending stump and you just kind of roll it on the sandpaper and you sand a nice, clean, uh, new edge. Okay? So these come in handy. I just feel that these are a little more control for me and easier to um, blending with the gamzel. 
Um, and to me, it doesn't. It says it's a dauber top, Stacy. Uh oh, I have to look into that. Yeah, you just it just really makes it look like I don't know perfectly airbrushed blending. Um, so it's really really nice. I like the Arteza pencils. There's a lot of colors. I think it's 120 colors in this set. And they're way cheaper. And I haven't had any lead breakage problems. And I've been sharpening them a lot. And I think this little case is just adorable. Okay. The other type of color pencils are... Watercolor pencils. Now, if you saw me review these last year... Girl fell in love with these pencils because, again, I have a little bit of OCD. What's the matter? Which earring? Both of them or one of them? No, one of the backs. So the whole earring fell out. But I still have the front part. You, so you just lost the back? No problem. Mommy's got extras. Don't cry, honey. You took a shower. Good job. Don't cry. I got lots of extra backs. Honey, I'll buy you new earrings. It's okay. Don't worry, okay? You can go play on your computer or watch TV. All right? Don't cry, baby. Oh, she's so sweet. Um, aw, Stacy, I will, I will get you a dauber top. I thought it because it said on there dauber. Doesn't it say dauber in the description? Dauber top. She lost the back to her earring. She just started wearing earrings again. So she got her ears pierced when she was six months old. Everything was great. But her eczema started attacking her skin. And so we had to take the earrings out because they were getting irritated. Plus, she's probably slightly allergic. My mom is allergic. So we took them out for a really long time. And then she was scared and she didn't want to put them back in. Well, recently she let me put them back in just a few months ago. So now she's super like into wearing earrings so she she thought she must have lost one yeah i thought it did say dauber and if it didn't we need to complain to amazon i know chow it's an asian thing she's lactose intolerant she gets bad eczema and she gets bloody noses that poor kid all right so watercolor pencils again i I have two sets. I think one set I have is close to my heart. This is, again, Arteza brand. And I'm really not trying to be like an Arteza commercial here. But there's a little mark there that looks like a paintbrush. And, again, these just go down super smooth. And I like to use them on either watercolor paper or Bristol. But I will be honest with you, Bristol is a lot easier to use. Where's my Bristol? So you color like regular color pencils and then you would never know that was a pencil. Once you get the water to that and it smooths out. And again, with the Bristol, you have a little bit of time. Now, I wouldn't do like full watercolors on Bristol. You might have to go to actual watercolor paper. But I like these pencils. They're very, very easy to blend and use. Yeah, Stacy, he's misrepresenting. He better recognize he messing with the FSC. Um, okay, so I like these. Again, they sell this case at Arteza. Um, but they're just easy to color and watercolor. And I like to fake watercoloring. I'm not really good with paints, you guys. Okay, Copic markers, not so good with. Not so good with watercoloring. Pencils, I can do. Okay, it's a little bit, it's, for me, it's a control thing. I like having control of what I'm doing. I'm not a messy crafter, as you guys know. Okay. And yes. There are more expensive brands out there. Yes, they are probably a better quality. No, I'm not going to buy them. If they want to send them to me, I will certainly try them out for you. Not going to go buy expensive watercolor pencils. I'm not a professional artist. Um, speaking of watercolors, the last thing I have to talk about are... 
watercolor crayons. Okay. Uh, I have both of the expert sets, Sunshine, which are 120, but they sell them in like 48, 96, 72, something like that. You, I have both sets are 120 that I have. Um, so these are a set of Faber-Castell Gelatos. Makes me want to go to Rita's. Um, but they're super smooth and creamy pastel crayons. These are water reactive. So just like, um, there's a lot of people that love these for mixed media. There's so much you can do with these. They come in a variety of colors. Obviously, Faber-Castell, Faber-Castell, however you want to say it, is a well-known art supply company. They've been around for a long, long time. You can use these straight. You can take your color and scribble it on your craft mat. You can, they're water soluble, so you can pick that color up now with your water brush and color with it. Here I have it colored down, so I'm gonna take my watercolor brush, and again, I'm using Bristol paper here. I'm gonna take my watercolor brush and wet that down and spread that color around. Um, so these are a lot of fun. Again, more, I think, uh, mixed media usage um, than card making, but they are fun. They definitely are. So you can buy them in different sets, and they have metallics. They have pastels. They have, uh, you know, nature colors. So a lot of different colors. They're just fun, but very similar to the watercolor crayons that are out there. There's a lot of companies. Tim Holtz has the Distress Crayons. Um, there's just a lot of them. So I'm going to put all of those in the same category. Basically, you can use them as a straight crayon. You can leave them that way. You can scribble them on your table and pick up the color. You can put water to the color. It, that's how you would use it. Yeah, Italian ice. Exactly. Okay. But these kinds of things I do like. For me, smooth blending, I would reach for Bristol. Okay, uh, you don't have to seal them. Once it's dry, it's dry. The, the color's on there. Okay, um, you guys have seen me use pan pastels enough times. Pan pastels are basically a chalk and uh, they're professional quality, actually real artist quality. Those are probably the only things I own that are real artist quality are the pan pastels. But I love pan pastels because they're easy to clean up. They're easy to blend. Yeah, they get a little messy, but they wash right off. There's no staining with them. And you just have to seal the pan pastels. Yeah, there is a huge difference with Bristol. Um, so I think I'm down to three last papers here. This one is one you don't see too often anymore. Mulberry paper, it's also known as handmade paper, okay? So mulberry paper or handmade paper, you can see the fibers of the paper are deliberately not milled smooth. So you get this cool kind of texture on the paper. I use it every once in a while for this torn edge. Here's a secret to getting that torn edge and you want it straight. Um, a little hack is you take, like I use it to mat my papers, not necessarily to do any art with it, but more for matting, matting card um, pieces. You take a ruler, you take a water, uh, watercolor pencil, and you draw, I mean a water brush, you draw a line where you want that to be. Okay, because if you color, if you cut this with scissors, it's going to be a straight cut line. And then all you do is you pull. And as you pull, you'll get this soft, torn edge, almost kind of like a cottony look, but it's going to be straight. You see that? So I do have mulberry paper. I don't know how many people still use handmade paper or mulberry paper. It's just a fun texture to have, just like we like to have fun foiling and glitter papers. Um, that's all. It's a very thin paper, though. It even sells you border and matting papers. Not good for die cutting, not good for coloring, just a cool kind of textured background. 
Okay. Um, then the last two things I have are kind of cool papers that I think get underutilized. Let me read here. Makes great African silhouette backgrounds. Cool. Twinkling H2Os are kind of like uh, shimmer watercolors. Yeah, similar to the metallic watercolors I got from Arteza. Yeah. Shimmering pots of wonder. Cool. Yeah, I don't really have those because I have enough watercolor paints. <laughs> um, I posted a video this week of the difference between brushos and um, pow what's it called? Crystal crystal something, powdered crystal something. They're basically powdered, powdered elements. I don't know. They're basically the same. Uh, sure, Connie, I can flip through this very old pack. I don't know if you'll find it anywhere. Uh, this is from Creating Keepsakes. No, I think this is Die Cuts with a View. Yeah, this is Die Cuts with a View. Look, I never noticed this. Step Saving Products by Nancy. Who is this woman? I need to be getting some royalties from this. Uh, this one's called Brights. Mulberry Paper Stack Brights. This is very, very old. <laughs> so we have a fuchsia, a bright canary yellow, dark, dark purple, uh, white, which you can see I've used a few times, orange, turquoise and dark blue and this was 25 sheets back in the day like 1982 i don't know <laughs> okay i want to talk about vellum and transparency film because these are the two that i think are very very underutilized and i often have to remind myself at how cool these papers are and just remind my I fall in this rut and I will admit it and you guys have been watching my videos I do the same thing over and over again like my card bases are always a two sides cards and they're always um side folding I very rarely do a top folding card I always kind of do either a full mat background or I always do the same size with a five and a quarter mat and then a five a five um five by three and three quarters. So I fall into this rut of kind of always doing the same style of matting on my cards. All right. Um, transparency film, I think most of us think of it as, okay, well, we can use that to make shaker cards, right? Oh, look, I need something clear to hold in my shaker. Um, that's where the shaker cards come in. Okay. But it can do so many other things for you. Um, Number one, storing your stamps on them. So oftentimes we buy odds and ends stamps and we put our own kind of cling film on them. You can take a piece of that transparency, depending on how thick it is, and you can stick your cling stamps to it. Okay, so that's one of the things. The second thing is, I don't know if you guys have heard um, um, the, the smush method, um, I think Gina K calls it smack and, smack and acetate. <laughs> and all you do is you take a piece of acetate and when you are coloring, especially if you're doing a distressed background, I call it the, the smush method. You take your inks. You spray it, and then you pick up that on the transparency, and then you kind of lay that color down on the transparency. Now, I'm using that crappy paper again, but you get my idea of what you can do with the acetate, okay? Um, the other thing that I think a lot of people forget about a lot, a lot, a lot of people forget this one. Let me clean this off. By the way, this is just a piece of stamping package that I didn't throw away. I keep it. I keep it. I recycle it. I reuse it. Okay. How about when we are stamping? This is actually perfect. Perfect. 
By the way, I did order two black mini misties from Joanne. Thanks to enabling by you guys. I think that was Bernie again. Bernie's the biggest enabler here. God, I love her. All right. <laughs> but um, I ordered two, one for myself and one for you guys. I'm going to put it in the giveaway. I couldn't pass that price up. $34. All right. So let's say Nance is stamping this sentiment. Okay, this is a rubber stamp, so I need to take out my foam pad. I can't really see where I'm stamping here because it's not clear. It's a rubber stamp, right? So, doot, doot, doot. Oh, you know what? That's not straight. I don't think I want it there. I want to move it somewhere else. You got acetate. So, you move your, put your little piece of acetate in there. Put your stamp where you think you want it. And before you mess up and stamp it, you can stamp on that acetate. Okay, and now maybe you say, oh, I, I need that to be down here. Okay, then you move your stamp or you move your paper. You might say, you don't always have to move the stamp. You might say, okay, I'm going to move, I'm going to move this up so that it stamps over here, whatever you need to do. But just remember, you have acetate that will help you line up if those are straight or not, especially when using rubber stamps in with your Misty. You can't always tell with rubber stamps where it's going to stamp out. So you have acetate for that. And then when you're done, you can usually just wipe that away and keep that acetate for something else. Does that make sense? Well, that sucks, Sparkle Miss. They don't ship to Canada. Okay, so you can use it for storing your stamps. You can use it for a, a, a water coloring palette. Let's say you don't want to do the smush method. I just had these gelatos out. Let's say I want. I don't have a Tim Holtz mat, or I don't want to mess up my Tim Holtz mat, or I want to mix some colors. Maybe I take some gelatos and I rub those on the uh, acetate or my crayons, or my watercolor markers, or whatever I'm doing, I do a little homegrown palette here. And guess what? It's totally disposable, and I don't feel guilty about using this little piece of acetate. And now I have my own little, you know, mixing palette here. Okay, so you can use the acetate for that. Um, I often forget that you can die cut acetate. Not only can you die cut acetate, you can make emboss, um, embossing folder images on acetate. So let's do that. So like, let's say I were making butterfly wings, fairy wings. Maybe I cut this butterfly out and I wanna give it some alcohol marker glow in the dark butterfly wings. Like I stamp it and then I color it. And then when I put it on my paper, look, I have this, these light up or light see-through wings, fairy wings, stuff like that. Snowflakes. You want a subtle look, but you don't want to do it on regular paper. You know, you can have that with the acetate. Um, and many, many different companies sell different quality of acetate. Oh, let's not forget my favorite use. I'm going to emboss this, but get anybody want to guess what my favorite use for acetate is? And I'm going to tell you right now, it is not shaker cards. I'm going to grab an embossing folder while you discuss.
anybody have? Oh, yeah, you could make a stencil with it, but that's not what I was thinking. Oh, keep going. Man. I mean, I would have thought that the FSC would have been able to figure this one out. <laughs> That's right, foiling. What does it say right here? Oh, that doesn't sound right. That's what that says. Reverse. Don't break the machine, Nance. way too tight. Did you guys hear that? Don't glad I didn't show you that one. Okay. So you can print you can print with your laser printer, your full solid toner designs and you can foil it. <laughs> Who doesn't love that? Okay. Um so here I took a Doris embossing folder. It's got butterflies on it. I know you guys may not be able to see that. However, uh, I didn't need a coupon. It was thirty four, thirty four ninety nine. So because I'm using acetate, I'm using my alcohol ma markers to color in. And I'm just going to use some kind of loud, bright, obnoxious colors here just so hopefully you guys can see what's going on. That's fun. It's fun and annoying at the same time. I got to do this around my kids. <laughs> it was $34.99 for the mini um, Misty yesterday. And it said my Joann's had two in stock, so I did buy both of them. Sorry, I was being a hog because I was like, well, I want one and I'm going to give one to my wonderful people. Now, on the back side, now I was doing that on the raised side. On the back side of this, again, because it's acetate, it's see-through, I can trace the embossed design. So I'm just taking my marker and, and just rolling my marker in. I'm not being very careful about this, but this is a Copic, a black Copic marker, multi-liner marker. Okay, so this almost gives you kind of like that faux stained glass look because you have dimension with the embossing folder. You can color these in. You can do little, um, what are those things kids put in the window? Leah, what are those window window clings? Um, but they're little like painted stained glass windows. You could do that with the kids and just color it in. And it has this kind of stained glass look. The other thing you can do is sand it. And when you sand it, it turns white, like opaque white. Sun, sun catchers. That's what I was thinking. This 
the raised side, yeah. This is just a little sandpaper block. And again, depending on how thick your acetate is, but you can actually sand that and it turns from translucent to opaque white on those raised areas. So think about your embossing folders and the cool things you could do with your embossing folders. I did have like this full butterfly background and I colored one butterfly, left the rest of them clear. I colored one butterfly and put it on a piece of white cardstock and it really popped and looked cool. And people are like, how'd you do that? It's just acetate. And yes, you can run these through a laser printer, not an inkjet printer. Well, you could do an inkjet printer. You could do a laser printer and foil it the other thing I've done is made what I call um, floating Christmas ornaments. Basically, I cut a picture, make a print a picture, cut it in a circle with a little tab hanging out of the top, and put it in one of those round glass ornaments. And it looks like a floating ornament. See, I'm waiting for Joanne to send me an email. Hold on. No email yet from Joanne's. And I put my order in yesterday because I guess, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, acetate, really cool, comes in handy for a lot of things. And really kind of relatively cheap. I mean, for how much you're going to use it, it's really not that expensive. It really isn't. Okay, so that's acetate. Now, the last one I have is vellum, and I kind of saved vellum for last because I think vellum is the stepchild most people forget. Okay. I have a love-hate relationship with vellum, and I'll tell you why. Because vellum comes in so many different colors and um, thicknesses that I guess it's kind of like transparency film that I often forget to get my vellum out and use it. The number one way I see people using vellum is to have a shadow for a die cut. So if you die cut the word hello, and you want it to pop up on a card, maybe you do a shadow die cut and put that behind the card so that your focus is on your sentiment and it, it slightly, slightly kind of, um, what's the word, diffuses your background, okay? That's what I would say. Um, you can heat emboss on vellum. I'm still working on the whole foiling on vellum thing. Yes, I know you can do it. I just haven't figured out the right sandwich temperature, all that good stuff. Um, but vellum also can be run through embossing folders. And wherever vellum is pressed, um, the vellum turns opaque white. Okay. So this is a piece of Stampin' Up vellum. You get 20 sheets in here. It's eight and a half by 11. I would say it's a mid-weight. It's not a total wimpy weight, but it's not super heavy. So let me cut a piece of this down to five and a quarter by four. Cuts easily. It does rip. It is, I don't know, how would you guys explain vellum? It's kind of like, it's not really like paper, but it's not really synthetic. It's kind of like in between, right? So we can do the same method with running it through. Um, well, for example, oh, I used vellum when I made these wedding cards for my friend. Do I have a copy of that? Hold on. I might. I might. I might not. So when I made my friend's wedding invitations, I do not have them. What I actually did, I'll give you a, 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 walk, a talk through of it, is I made these trifold folders for her. These are retired Anna Griffin trifolders here. And I printed on vellum the actual wedding 
Yeah, parchment is different from vellum. I don't have parchment. Um, that's a very old school paper. <laughs> um, but I printed her wedding I, uh, invitation ideas on the vellum. Okay, and then in the background, I had this cool uh, stamped background. So let's just say this is my, all right, let's just throw this in here. Let's say this is my cool stamped background, okay? It's very busy, but it looks cool. But I stamped out all of the instructions. I not stamped out. I printed on the computer all of the instructions. And so when I laid it over her wedding invitations, you got a glimpse of the background, but really you were able to read the text that said on this day, so-and-so will be married at this place, blah, blah, blah. And it really kind of gave it this professional finished look. So I do like vellum for that. I have not had success with foiling vellum. I do have to practice that. It's on my to-do list. So I don't really want to talk too much about foiling on vellum. Um, better luck with, with, um, acetate than vellum. Um, but again, I know that people do shadow dyes. So if you have the word hello, you do a shadow dye. The other thing people do with the vellum is kind of like a belly band, I'll call it. So if you have a card that you've made and I'm just kind of grabbing stuff off my desk here. Uh, well, for example, where's the mom card we made? Here we go. So, for example, remember how we said, oh, this is kind of, of a busy background. We could have easily put this vellum over it and then put the mom over it or just took a sliver of that vellum and put it in the background. So it diffuses. That's the best way I can say it. It diffuses the background without you losing all of the, um, the beautiful stuff behind it. Yes, I know. I have to work on the foiling on vellum. I think she uses a thicker vellum, though. I don't think she uses cheapy vellum. <laughs> um, so um, vellum, and there are a lot of artists that use vellum similar to parchment paper where they do designs. Um, parchment paper art is a lost art. I think some people are trying to bring it back, but you can really make paper look like lace and they take, um, what do you call these things? Uh, embossing tools. So they take these embossing tools and they poke holes and they draw lines. And once you kind of bruise the vellum is what I'll say, it turns white. Let me do that embossing folder again so you can see. I'll try not to blow up my machine this time. I totally over sandwiched it. Now, vellum is a specialty paper that you want to use a Stazon or an archival ink on. Um, that didn't go all the way through. This is why I blow it up. Can we just do an embossing folder class, Nance? Were you not paying attention? Nope, flunked that day. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paper shim it. What is it? Those who can't teach. <laughs> I know what it was. I needed that little thin embossing mat, and I don't have one of those. That's what it was. There we go. 
Oh, and I did find out I was making a huge mistake, you guys, because there's two metal shims that you're supposed to use with the Gemini, and I was totally using the wrong shim, but that's a story for another day. All right, so this might have been a little too tight. It was too tight, but you'll get the basic idea. It was way too tight. Okay, um, but you can see I call it like bruising of the vellum, but once you indent that vellum, and a lot of artists, like I said, take stylus tools, and they do beautiful vellum decorating and coloring and things like that. And you can put ink on this, but I would use an alcohol ink. Um, yes. Yes, exactly, Marlene. You can do all of these kind of beautiful things using like a um, embossing mat or using... Um, let me move to one of these smaller guys. A mouse pad or something like that. But that's where parchment paper, parchment paper is different. Um, a lot of artists use parchment for that kind of, like I said, lacy look to it. And of course, you can take markers to this as well. The permanent markers are better, like the Copic markers, and you'll get a little bit of color kind of come through there. Not as transparent as transparency film. But um, you get the idea. It softens and diffuses your colors, your backgrounds, whatever you want to show it for. You can foil with it. That's it. Piercing tools. That's what I meant. Thank you, Patty. Um... Okay, yeah. So, yes. With a lot of these specialty papers... Look at Bernie, man. Bernie's always taking care of us. With a lot of these specialty papers, when you go to emboss them and run them through embossing folders, you can take a little spritz of water on them and it will soften the fibers and then you won't have the ripping like I'm having here. And that's because Nancy didn't memorize her embossing folder sandwiches because I don't use embossing folders even though I have a whole drawer of them. All right, anyway, you get the idea. Yes, it did crack. See? It poked its little wings right out. Almost perfectly, though. <laughs> okay. So, um, the only papers I didn't go over were foiling papers and glitter papers. I think you guys can figure most of that out. There's different qualities of foiling and glitter papers. You want to try to find, now I use all kinds of glitter papers, but you want to try to find a glitter paper that's pretty heavy cardstock where the glitter's not going to kind of flake off. Some of the cheaper store glitter is going to do that. But if you look around, like Die Cuts with a View has really, really nice glitter paper. I think Brutus Monroe has a nice glitter paper. Um, colored cardstock, my kind of the same thoughts on my colored cardstock because there's a lot of companies out there that make good quality colored cardstock. Honestly, I don't directly stamp on my colored cardstock. I always use white or black cardstock. So with colored cardstock, they end up being mats for my um, images and I just mat around. So you could use a uh, good quality colored cardstock if you're going to be doing um, like heat embossing on it or if you're going to be running it through an embossing folder. But you can use cheaper colored cardstock as your background mats as long as you have a strong base for your card. Okay, so that's where the 110 pound cardstock comes in place. What I don't recommend is using cheap cardstock on top of cheap cardstock on top of cheap cardstock because, yeah, I know price wise, oh, I think paper is all the same. It will come out in the quality of your card. It won't cut right, it will fray, it'll feel um, loose, and it, the glue won't stick properly, and you'll end up having paper ripping and things like that. So it is. You, you get in, you get out what you put in. So when it comes to good quality stamps, good quality inks, it's the same thing with good quality papers and good quality tools. Um, while we're talking about papers, I want to talk about paper trimmers real quick. I know I kind of 
went off on a tangent with the paper trimmers before. I think I've shown you guys, like I have like 18 billion paper trimmers. Again, why? Because that's what we did back then. So when paper trimmers failed, we went and bought new paper trimmers. Instead of buying new blades, we had to see what was out there. So, you know, I think my kids bought me this one. Here's one that you can change the way that the blades cut. So you got a straight blade, you got a I don't know how this works. Clearly, I don't use it. You get a perforated uh, blade. How do you turn this thing? I think this one used to light up, or I have one that lights up. I don't know. I don't use this thing. Maybe it's got to be down here. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's got to be at the end. But you can turn it and get all these different edges, decal edges, flur uh uh, grass edge, wavy edge, perforated, straight line, double line, all of this stuff, okay? Um, so, um, then it has these little rulers that come out, okay? So, yeah, pretty cool, pretty neat. I don't use it. Um, I gave Leah my old trimmer that has the replaceable blades in it. They have those trimmers that have the wire blades in them. This is an old cutter peed that you can change the blades in them. Um, but ever since I went to, I have two tonic guillotine things. Now I did get a new one of these cause I had one of the old red handled ones and it started hanging up. Like there was a chip in it and it started hanging up. Um, and uh, my friend sold me one of hers and then I contacted Ranger and they sent me a replacement one. So. Are these 100% perfect? Nah, they're not 100% perfect. Every once in a while, I get a hang up or I find that my uh, paper is cut crooked. And 99% uh, of the time, it's my fault for not paying attention or I'm trying to put too thick of too many pieces of paper in there. But this is a really nice, smooth cutter and I like my edges to be smooth. I don't like when I go to cut a piece of paper and if it's a dull blade, it's not even that it is crooked. It, it just bothers me if it's a dull blade. That didn't even, that didn't even go through. Okay. Um, you know, and I kind of get, I get that. Okay. I don't, I want my cards to look nice. I spent my money on good quality paper, on good quality inks, good quality stamps. You should have a good trimmer to go with it. So these guillotine trimmers are nice. Because they really do cut like butter. So I have this little small guy, which you guys see me reach for all the time. And you can hear it. You can just hear that it's a nice crunch when it's cutting through that paper. Okay, so it's just really nice, really smooth. Obviously, I don't let the kids touch it. It's kind of put away there. And then under my desk, I have Big Mama. But it's the same company... It's a tonic one. This is when I'm cutting my 12 by 12 papers down. And this is your little finger guide. So you hold your papers down and not cut your fingers off. But I love these tonic trimmers. They're really good. The cutter pillar is really nice. <laughs> I did consider the cutter pillar um, as an investment. I just couldn't get myself to buy it. I found the tonic one. And listen, when they change colors and they change um, styles, like Tim Holtz changed from red to black, guess what? You can get the red one on sale. It works just as good. Hello. Okay, my little guide fell off. Don't pay attention to that. But I mean, I think this is the one that hangs up. It has like a little chip in it. Why did I not throw it away? I don't know. Because I can't part with stuff. We're hoarders. Full set syndrome hoarders. Um, the glass mat. Gotta have it. Love. Love love the glass mat. I don't even care about this little nonstick thing because it comes off half the time. But you guys, glue, 
I bang this thing, everything. Just, it's awesome. I heat emboss on it. I color on it. I do everything on this thing. And it, it just, it takes a beating and keeps on ticking. Unlike my fossil watch, which is not working right now. <laughs> um, so I wanted to let you guys know some of the things in my links we can't get right now. So I tried to find the Tim Holtz platform for you guys. Not even on Europe is it available. Hero Arts Cleaner is out right now. The trimmer is hard to find right now, and it's only because a lot of these companies, remember, are shut down because of COVID. So as they come back in stock, we might have to wait a little bit. So I just want to make you aware of that. Because it's sold out right now, doesn't necessarily mean it's discontinued. It just kind of means that we're affected by coronavirus. And yes, it affects the crafting world too. So... Um, I think I went over everything. Hold on. Oh, that's sad, Bonnie. Yeah, shrinky dinks are completely different from acetate or window plastic. So don't not the same thing. All right, did I give a good enough thorough explanation to different types of papers and coloring options today? Chow says thumbs up. Are you kidding me right now? There's 230 people watching? Oh, Bonnie, don't be confused. You email me and I'll go through it with you. And remember, these videos are saved. So you guys can always go back and watch them. If you press the left side of the screen back, it'll go back 10 seconds. If you press the right side of the screen, it'll fast forward 10 seconds. And if you're new to our little community, welcome. Please join us at Foiling and Stamping Fun on Facebook. We are an all-inclusive community. Um, we love everybody. We accept everyone. And we want everybody to be successful at their craft. And it does not matter what your level is. It does not matter what your budget is. Um, we don't have any kind of rules or restrictions other than everybody has to be kind. We don't tolerate trolls. We don't tolerate any kind of naysaying. You will be booted from the group if you are disrespectful. Um, we are here to be a supportive community and we've been going live every night since the middle of March to be a supportive group where we can all talk and hang out for an hour or so. Usually it's longer than an hour. Um, and our group is um, linked there by Stacy. It's the Foiling and Stamping Fun. We're not sponsored by any kind of company. Um, it started by myself and my friend Tracy Schultz, who also has a YouTube channel. And we accept any kind of crafter, whether you are into um, card making, scrapbooking, crocheting, watercoloring, paint pouring, <laughs> uh, rock painting, whatever it is. And I just like to share with you guys my love of crafting and anything I can do to help you. I tend to be a fast crafter. I like to have my projects done in about 15 to 20 minutes, but I walk you through easy tutorials and generally I try to be very budget conscious or try to help you use um, things you may already have in your stash. However, I do occasionally review new items or alternative items that you might already have to save you money uh, versus new products that come out. There are a lot of new products that have come out that I've raved on and we've talked about. And there are some products that have come out where I've said, eh -eh, don't spend your money on that. Okay, so 
we're here. We joke. We say we are the FSC, which is the Foiling Snobs Club. We do it in jest. We're here for fun. We just want everybody to have a good time, be supportive. And if you would like to join my YouTube, just click on the little subscribe button that's going to come up in the right-hand corner. All of these lives every night, you can turn the chats on so you can read um, what we're talking about in the live chat. It will come up for you like this it does take so you guys know about 24 hours for youtube to catch up with that so when we end it takes me about a half an hour an hour or so to get the links up for you um, for all the things that i try to remember to show you guys and then the chat takes about 24 hours to, for to catch up to the video so um there's nothing i can do about that it just kind of happens like that so Yesterday, I've been trying to keep the dates on the videos so you can kind of follow along if you miss them. Um, but yesterday, we talked about different types of inks. We talked about stamping platforms, and we talked about different types of stamps in terms of clear, photopolymer, silicone, and rubber stamps. Today, we talked about different types of paper, and we talked about trimmers, and we talked about um, coloring elements. And... Every day we talk about foiling, <laughs> whether it's hot foiling or toner foiling. And yes, there is a difference between the types of foils and the types of materials. And they are linked to the very top of our Facebook page. If you go to um, documents or um, it will sell you, it will show you, show you the frequently asked questions of foiling. And I break it down in that little form. And I believe you can print it out and it tells you the different companies and what kind of foiling you can do. Oh, you guys are the best. I do have the best subscribers. And I don't feel like I am a YouTube influencer. I feel like I'm your neighbor. I'm your friend. I'm your coworker. That you guys are all just down the street from me. That's what I feel like. I cannot believe that there are 235 crafty people hanging out. It's usually... 60, 70, 80 people a night. Um, and whether you're you're just speaking up, you're just new to crafting, or you've been doing this for 20 years, we're glad that you're here. And if you ever have questions, you can always post them down in the links below or email me nancystamps15 at gmail.com. Yay! Sunshine. And we're really close um, yes, Sparkle Miss, I did an embossing folder kind of how-to a couple weeks ago. I'll try to find that for you. Um, I know I kind of get off tangent. What? Carolyn, how did you get those? Hi, Maria. Welcome, honey. Um, don't forget the thumbs up because the thumbs up, number one, tells me what you guys like. Number two, it lets YouTube know what you like. So YouTube will send you similar videos. Um, so don't forget that. And if you can share, yes, share, share, share. I have a, uh, my Facebook page is Nancy Stamps 15. My Instagram is Nancy Stamps 15. Um, yeah, I often try to find discounts or sales. So last week we had the large mink on Amazon for $58, which I am so jealous that you guys have gotten yours. And mine is not shipping till May. I don't understand that when Tracy and I were the first ones to order it. Um, yesterday we found the Mini Misty, thanks to Bernie, on sale for $34.99 at Joanne. So we try to find deals for you guys too. Um, but I would say foiling is probably what my strength is. I really understand toner foiling. I'm okay at hot foiling. But toner foiling is my strength or mink foiling. And I'm learning along the way to do coloring and card making and all of those good things. So, yeah, Stacy, I don't understand it. Oh, and I'm going to be playing. I keep saying I'm going to be playing with the scan and cut that Melanie sent me. I love you, um, but I'm sorry that 25-inch trout just took over my mind today. <laughs> I am on cloud nine about that fish. And if you didn't get to see the picture, go on my Facebook. It's also on the front of the YouTube here. I just couldn't help but sharing with everybody my 25-inch trout. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
I don't have a life, clearly. <laughs> Not long. It came right in, Jan. But again, I thought it was a smaller fish, so Nancy's is in play. I'm so used to wrestling with bass. When I think it's a fish, I get that baby in. And it wasn't until she jumped and I saw how big she was that I was like, uh, might want to be a little delicate with this one. <laughs> right, Gloria Shark? Um, Wednesday, I think it's Wednesday... Is that Wednesday, Caroline? The Creative Vision Mystery Box is going on sale. Oh, my gosh. Listen, if you don't buy yourself anything else for Mother's Day, your birthday, Christmas, I give you permission on behalf of the S FSC to buy a Creative Vision Stamps mega mystery box. Previously in the past, mystery boxes were, excuse me, I think $49, okay? And you basically got your standard, you know, FedEx box. Ah, spider! It was like a baby spider. I so wussed out. I don't even think I killed it. I think it jumped. Ew! That was creepy. Thank goodness Leo wasn't down <laughs> <laughs> anyway it's it's it was like it's like a fedex ups box full of deb help me out here on the size of the box um but it was full of foilables okay you didn't really get foils with it because different products different colors and so on anyway i don't know where it went i did not kill it there's no spider guts here i think i hit it and it flew away somewhere i don't know it'll come out um at least it was a little like airy spider it wasn't like a big scary nasty australian spider <laughs> sorry margaret <laughs> But so the foilables used to come with over $100 worth of stuff and it was $50. Well, because Laura is retiring, the queen mother of foiling, um, she basically is trying to chock these boxes full of anything she can in her closet. So I think you're going to get a lot more than foilables. I have a feeling there's going to be some stamps in there. 35 of the mega, mega boxes are going to have some kind of special something in them. Only 35 boxes. 35 boxes are going to have something special in them. Um, so I know it's a lot. I think it's 150. 15, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's 115. No, you cannot order a separate order and say, hey, put that in my mystery box. The mystery boxes are going to be packed and ready to go, and all she's going to do is slap a label on them, okay? So if you want to order other stuff, that has to be a completely separate order. It's, it's a mega mystery box, and that's it. No refunds, no exchanges. You are going to poop yourself when you open this box. 50 boxes or 35 boxes? Um, Stacy, I kind of have already done some of that research, and we'll talk about that a little later. I want to let her enjoy herself and her retirement. I have some alternatives for you guys. Are they going to be as good? I don't know yet. Um, but I am, I'm doing some homework for you guys, yes. It is going to rain, which is why I had to go fishing today because it's supposed to rain the whole rest of the week. And as you guys know, after next week, I got to go back to work. <laughs> I think her email said 35 people are going to have an extra something in there. Yeah. So Bernie says, funny story, my daughter and sister were downstairs and heard me scream really loud. My sister said they should check on me, and my daughter said, no, I'm pretty sure that was a spider scream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go back to work May 4th, but 
nothing around the house got fixed like I wanted it to get fixed. Like, my kitchen didn't get done. My doors didn't get done. My deck is definitely not done. It's not safe. The kids can't go outside on the deck. My Wi-Fi took a crap. <laughs> Luckily, it got fixed. My watch took a crap. I'm waiting for them to contact me back. The two of my favorite fishing reels don't have handles on them. I contacted Shakespeare like you guys told me to. Shakespeare said, um, they're discontinued. Sorry, you're going to have to buy new reels. But we'll give you a discount if you want to buy new reels, which is nice. But these are like my favorite fishing rods. So it's like... Every time I feel like I'm getting ahead, something comes and punches me in the gut. So this week, you guys have been so good to me. Bernie, Lee, Chow, uh, Melanie, Terry, Stacy, Tracy, all of you guys have done something. I'm trying not to get choked up here to just be there for me and help me out and support this channel and support each other. The words of kindness I see on our Facebook page, I'm like... Oh my God, they're so awesome. <laughs> so I love you guys. I say it at the end of every night, virtual hugs. I mean it. And if I could get a chance to, to get a tour bus and do a Nancy Stamps tour and meet all of you guys, I would do it in a heartbeat. No problem. And that's one of the reasons I don't have, several have you suggested doing a Patreon account. Now, I don't fully understand the grasp of a Patreon account. I guess what it is, is... Um, you would pay a membership and then um, you would get classes or art or something from me as part of that page. I don't want to charge you guys for that. I really don't. I share my knowledge because it's fun. It keeps me occupied. It keeps you occupied. By you guys watching the YouTube videos, clicking the like button, using my affiliate links, that's all the support I need from you guys. Every once in a while when you guys give me the extra on the YouTube, I guess you can send money. I still haven't figured that whole thing out. It blows my mind that you guys are so generous and the things that you guys say and the things that you guys send. I just, it, it really warms my heart. I love you all. You're all great people. And I hope every single one of you understands how truly special you are. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, that's what I mean, um, Sunshine. I don't know. I guess there's somewhere on there, and you guys push a button, and I'll get like two ninety nine or four ninety nine or ten ninety nine or whatever it is, and it just blow. My sister does it all the time, and I'm like, how do you do that? So you guys are great. I am going to miss you guys when I'm going back to work. I will tell you that. But I will get back to recording videos and trying to make them somewhat regular. And I will try to do, if I can't, I will try to do a once a week hangout with you guys. Because this is fun. Aw. So what do you guys want to see for tomorrow's video? Because I tried to do the basics of what I think stamping is about. Um, so we did paper, inks, stamps, cutting tools. I think you guys have enough videos on hot foiling versus mink foiling. Um, you have a lot of videos on pan pastels. You have a lot of videos with me coloring. You have a lot of videos. Oh, Arteza is sending me um, vinyl. I'm going to see if I can make some decals for you guys. I think it's perfect timing because we have Baby Joy, Silhouette, and Scan and Cut. So we'll be able to check out all three of them with making some vinyls. I'm going to try to make us some FSC stickers. Um, they're going to send me transfer tape and they're going to send me the Big Mama foam. So we can try that out and I'll let you guys know how that works. And again, affiliate links are listed on my Facebook page and our, in our Facebook group. Um, so anything you're looking for in terms of all to new hero art, scrapbook.com, craft stash, um, those companies, Amazon provide me with an affiliate link. If you just click on that, um, but, um, creative vision stamps, blue night rubber stamps. Those are just companies that I love. And oftentimes I link other companies that I don't have an affiliate link for just because they're good companies. Um, I just start, um, linked yesterday, seven kids crafts, which I think Tracy's on their design team today. I just found out, but seven kids crafts 
um, is where I got all my Lavinia stamps. So I linked them my craft craft room. My craft room, I think, is where I got a lot of my Versa Fine ink pad refills. So I try to link those as well. So not every link is an affiliate link, just so you guys know. Bonnie, so I always do a heavyweight base card, 110 pound cardstock. Then I do some kind of colored cardstock. Uh, I'll write this down for you, my little cheat sheet here. So I literally have a little piece of paper stuck in front of me here. <laughs> and I look at it every time I make a card. You would think I'd have this memorized. Good night, Sparkles. Okay, so I normally do A2 size card. This marker's all dried up. And these are the little measurements I have on a little piece of paper stuck in front of me, okay? So a regular piece of paper is cut in half, and so the base of the card is five and a half by four and a quarter. This is going to be your 110 pound cardstock. Black or white is normally what I use. Very rarely do you see me use colored cardstock, okay? Then for my first mat, it's five and a quarter, so it's a quarter inch smaller. And this is where colored cardstock, um, foil, glitter, whatever you're going to do, some kind of cool background that you made. And then what I call the stamping layer. And listen, I don't like to measure. You guys know that. So this is usually my go-to blueprint. You can do an eighth of an inch off of here and do even more layers if you really want to get fancy schmancy. But this is Nancy's little secret. So if you guys want to write this down, this is, I have a little piece of paper like this stuck on the, the light in front of me. So this is normally 110 pound cardstock. This middle layer can pretty much be anything. And then the stamping layer is where I use whatever cardstock I'm doing. So I'm going to use Bristol or I'm going to use 80 pound Nina or I'm going to use uh, matte paper or Yupo paper, whatever I'm doing. This can be any, any weight. It really can because you're going to cover it up for the second layer. The third layer is going to be either 80 pound Nina is what it usually is for me. Um, the good Nina or Yupo or um, glossy or matte coated, whatever your, your, your stamp image is, your focal image is on. That's what I call my stamping layer. So just to give you here, let me give you a demonstration. Okay, this is my my cheapy Hobby Lobby 110 pound heavy card stock. I don't buy card bases. I make my own. It's too expensive to buy card bases and you don't know what kind of paper you're going to get. So I take this, I cut it in half at five and a half because my first... My first panel is five and a half, right? So I cut it in half at five and a half. So I can get two cards out of one piece of paper, right? And I take my little score buddy. If you don't have a score buddy, it's really nice. They're really inexpensive. I think they're $20. You go into four and a quarter and score it. Flip it over. It's going to give us a nice, smooth crease. Or you can fold it in half, whatever works for you, okay? Then for my second layer, my matte layer, I need to be at five and a quarter by four, okay? So I'm gonna find some kind of color that coordinates with my stamped image. I always do my stamped image first. 
I coordinate my papers to my stamped image. So if this is my stamped image or my main panel, I want this to be five by three and three quarters. So I'm gonna cut this down to fit five by three and three quarters. And then my matte layer can be almost anything. I'm just trying to use what's on the desk here. So let's say I use, I don't know. I really like a pink. I think blue would be too much. Let me find a pink. So this would be, my middle layer can be almost anything, five and a quarter by four. And I know there's a lot of stamp companies out there that sell a lot of nice colored papers. It's your personal preference. I have some really good papers and I have some really cheap papers. You just have to decide how you're gonna use it. And then I follow this. Now, I know that these are all, what, a quarter of an inch apart? Glue is a discussion we'll have another day, too. Okay, so I know these are a quarter inch apart, so I'm going to leave myself a little quarter inch white border for my base card, and then I'm going to have another quarter inch border for my mat and my stamped image or my focal image and that's it so like I said a lot of times you can change your size you can change your paper you can emboss your background you can watercolor your background but if you're going to be a quickie crafter like Nance and you're going to try to do this in 15 20 minutes that's it I mean you just you glue it all together. Now, sometimes we get fancy schmancy, like when it's time to make Christmas cards and stuff. When I do my design team cards, I'll be honest with you guys, I kind of go a little fancy with them because they're going to be displayed on sh at shows. So, let me see if I can find something here. Sometimes I go full background. This is edge to edge. I don't have a mat in this one. Sometimes I use fancy die cuts. This is a border die around this one. So it's really up to you. Sometimes you got to improvise. When I cut these pieces of Yupo, the Yupo paper was smaller than five by three and three quarter. So I made my mat fit and then my background card is a little bigger. Sometimes I don't mat at all. I just go and get funky, cool things and stick them together. So it just depends on what you're doing. So here's foiling, glitter foiling. But usually if you get one of my cards and you see my cards, this is the general format I always go back to. So card base, mat, stamping platform. Stamping panel, I should say. Card base, matte, stamping panel. Card base, matte, stamping panel. So that's just, and then of course, you can embellish out the wazoo. You can add sequins, you can add glitter drops, you can add uh, Nuvo drops, you can add uh, uh, glitter and foil and, you know, 3D embellishments, ribbon. There's all kinds of things, diamonds and pearls and all those things Prince sang about. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, you 265 people are freaking awesome. Please give me a thumbs up before you leave. And then here's this again. And then uh, what I wanted to tell you is if you're going to do a colored cardstock or a black card, 
I usually cut a piece of the 80 pound Nina and glue it to the inside. I will cut that to this size, the five by three and three quarters and glue it to the inside. If you're gonna be stamping on the inside or writing your message, excuse me, on the inside, don't do that on your 110 pound card base because it's not gonna be as good. Um, so use that nicer paper on the inside, especially if you're doing a black card, a darker card stock. Having that white panel just kind of finishes it off. That was quick. That was super quick, Sunshine. Sunshine ordered something like yesterday and it's already shipping. Can we get back to this Marabou Rainbow Ink? Oh my gosh. You guys, let me. It doesn't come off. Oh, even better. Oh, Chow, what have you done? <laughs> okay, guys, let me go make sure my kids didn't kill each other. We'll figure out what we're going to do tomorrow. Maybe we'll do um, heat embossing. Did you guys watch the Versamark video? I put a link on yesterday's video. So watch the Versamark video, and then maybe, maybe we'll talk about heat embossing tomorrow. Does that sound good? I know, and I'm trying to do a 15,000 subscriber giveaway. We're so close. We're like 215 people away from the 15,000 subscriber giveaway. Yeah, that's a great idea, Stacy. Let's do adhesives. I'm going to pull them all out. Let's do adhesive and embossing tomorrow. That's a great idea. I'm just going to pull the whole drawer of glue out. Let's do adhesives and embossing tomorrow. Great idea. I'm putting all the adhesives on the desk so I don't forget. Okay, guys, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for listening to me talk about my fish. <laughs> and thank you again for all your generosity and submitting things for the 15,000 subscriber giveaway. You guys are freaking awesome. I wish I could do 15,000 prizes for my 15,000 subscribers. And uh, if you guys need anything, post them down below in the comments. I will link... I'll try to link everything in the description for you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Um, John, you can um, email me here and we can talk about it. Yes, good night, crafty family. Good night, sunshine, Melanie, Stacy. Love you guys. Have a good night. And we'll see you guys tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern. We will talk about um, adhesives and heat, heat embossing, okay? Bye, guys. Don't forget to join our Facebook group.